What is the worst movie you've ever seen? No, I'm not talking about Transformers 2 or Grown Ups 2, I mean a movie so bad, so fundamentally broken, that it leaves a pit in your stomach or makes you feel frustrated and angry beyond any reasonable measure. This is a question I've been asking myself for a while, and I think it's about time to do something about it. So I've pulled up the list of the bottom 100 lowest rated movies on IMDb, and I'm going through them one by one to find the worst movie ever. Welcome to the search for the worst. Food Fight is the worst thing in the history of anything ever, but at the same time I couldn't help but be fascinated by how ungraceful and artless it is. The story behind the scenes of this movie is actually far more interesting than the film itself. Believe it or not, this film was released in 2012, but there's a reason behind it. Originally it was planned to be released in 2003, but the entire production was such a mess that it meant it kept being delayed. At one point the director claimed that hard drives with unfinished assets from the movie were stolen in what he called an act of industrial espionage. The budget for this movie has been estimated to have exceeded that of $45 million. So understandably the film's investors were extremely upset and the film just sort of floundered around in purgatory until it was shat out sometime in 2012. So what about the actual movie? Well, unsurprisingly, it's one of the most insufferable films I've ever had the misery of watching. The movie opens as a supermarket is closing down for the night and the lights are shut off. Then for some reason it just cuts to everything lighting back up and it turns out, much like Toy Story, the products in the store come to life when there are no humans around. We are then introduced to our protagonist, Dex Dogtective. Now I do have to at least credit this movie with one thing. It's the scariest horror movie I've ever seen in my entire life. The animation is so grotesque that I'm sure any child who wound up watching this would have horrific nightmares probably for the rest of their sad little life. You despise me, don't you? But perhaps what's even more insulting than the freakish animation is the extreme amount of blatant product placement. Being a UK citizen meant I didn't really recognise many of the product icons, but in saying that, even then it was still completely transparent. So Dex Dog Detective is a detective who goes around solving crimes because movie. He wants to marry some mutant cat lady human hybrid because apparently this movie has a thing for interspecies romance. We have the dog cat human hybrid couple, and later in the movie, this weird bat thing tries to fuck the shit out of this squirrely pig creature. Do you work out? I use the Thigh Master. Him? Hey, 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 back off! And with you on my back? Yeah. Not that I mind that. Speaking of the squirrel pig creature, he's the dog's best friend and is going to be the best man at his wedding. Everyone in this movie has fucking ADD. They writhe around at all times, flailing their arms or spinning for absolutely no reason. How did you get in and out of the store? You're an Ike. I have a theory that this is because the animators could only be fucked to create one static body motion and just reused it whenever they could to save time or whatever. So it's back to the shop where this- Oh my god. Jesus. Yes, meet the main villain of this film, kinda. A crazy businessman who starts replacing products with what he calls Brand X, or something. I'm having trouble trying to recall what happened in this film. It was kinda like watching a 90 minute fever dream, or a bath salt hallucination. We cut to six months later, where Cat Lady has gone missing, and Dog Freak has given up being a detective and now owns a club. Then this lady comes waltzing in and says some boring shit. And then I guess Dog Freak goes back to being a detective to find out what's going on with this Product X bullshit. We then find out these characters are the embodiment of their product, meaning they're the soul of it or something? Which means that when they die, the product dies as well? I don't know, it makes no sense. No, really, none of it makes any sense. We're the soul of our products. Without us, they're gone. Real fast. This dog asshole can't help but quote a famous movie or phrase at the end of every single scene he's in. I literally just googled best movie quotes and found a list of them. And most of the ones on that list were in this movie, but with a word or two replaced with a random food item. Of all the produce bars and all the supermarkets and all the world, she had to walk into mine. I just can't throw in the paper towel on Dan. Let's strawberry jam out of here. I'm gonna pop your corn, lady. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a spam. I bet they thought they were being really clever when they wrote this shit as well. So for no reason at all they introduced this freaky looking weasel, who's animated like he's supposed to be in a Tom and Jerry cartoon or something, but he just looks disturbing when combined with the fucked up universe this movie has created. So the lady from earlier is evil or something, and she has these henchmen who are blatantly supposed to be Nazis. 
Security around here! You stay on the train or- Remember, this is a kid's movie. She randomly has this huge army of what she calls robotic exobites. They're building an entire army of robotic exobites. The Nazis then go around and start murdering other icons. This movie is so fucking inappropriate, primarily with its sexuality, especially this green Nazi bloke. I don't even want to talk about it, just, just watch this. I love pulverizing. It warms my heart the way you love my raisins, tough guy. I love a good violation. I love anything to do with violation. <laughs> oh, Mama Sita! Yo, sweet cakes! Ooh, nice packaging! How about some chocolate frosting? I like to butter your muffin! I think I just wet myself. It feels rather nice. <laughs> Being filthy can be loads of fun. That would be lots of fun. More fun than a spanking. Wait! <laughs> I want to scrub your bubbles, Dex. Tell me something. Are those melons real? Dog freaking company needs to go out to the store in the daytime because... Fuck it, I'm not gonna try to describe why anything happens in this movie. Just accept the fact that it does. So eventually the movie leads up to this fight scene, which lasts for something like 20 minutes. Allow me to introduce you. Not yourself, Cheezle T Weasel rocks. What? Why? Please make it stop. Somebody make it stop. Make it stop. Oh my god, it's a twist. It turns out the crazy man from earlier in the store was actually a giant robot controlled by the evil lady. What? No. Make it stop. Bring back druids. Or three ninjas. Anything. Anything but this. I finally figured out what this movie was trying to do. It was trying to pull off some kind of Toy Story Who Framed Roger Rabbit compilation movie. Take the inanimate objects coming to life thing from Toy Story, but combine it with a noir mystery with a selection of recognisable characters. Who Framed Roger Rabbit was also pretty edgy, which I guess explains why this movie makes all the inappropriate jokes. I guess it also explains the end reveal where the main villain is revealed to be someone else. The robot was even played by Christopher Lloyd for Christ's sake. I understand that somebody ordered a recall. But instead of being a classic like Toy Story or Roger Rabbit, Food Fight is a mirror into what it would be like to be mentally insane. Nothing makes sense, it's bland and boring, the backgrounds are empty, the voice acting is awful, and it hurts your brain to try and watch the horribly motion-captured creatures interact with each other. But I'm not sure where this movie lies in the search for the worst, it's definitely a fucking abomination. You know what, I put this on par with Three Ninjas. It actually shares a lot of similarities, come to think of it. In fact, this movie shares a bunch of things with the first two movies in the search for the worst. It has a tone that's completely inappropriate for the movie, just like in Three Ninjas, and the whole movie builds up to a really boring fight scene, much like in Druids. I think every time I watch one of these movies, it takes a year off my life expectancy. I can literally feel the life inside me fade as I absorb this tripe into my brain. Please help me. So what comes next in the search for the worst? What the hell is a zat? That's it, folks. The latest installment in the search for the worst. What do you think? Can it really get much worse than this? Anyone way to find out? By continuing. Anyway, make sure you check out the other episodes in the search for the worst. And as always, thanks for watching. All comments and ratings are appreciated. I'll see you next time. Bye.